you know, the, we experience the glory of God in something as simple as an oyster and, and in the goodness of the men and women who brought this oyster to us. So uh, for me, coming to Paris and going to the oyster bar is, you could say, an act of worship. I was born in 1967 in a small town on the Mississippi River in South Louisiana. My family was Methodist, you know, one of the Protestant churches, but we didn't go to church that often. You know, we went on Easter and Christmas and we didn't need to go because uh, we already agreed with God and we were so happy that God agreed with us. Well, by the time I got to be 14, 15 years old, I realized that for my family, Christianity was really not much more than the, the white middle class at prayer. And I, I threw it away. I said, I don't want to be that. This is just a, a, like a psycho form of therapy, of psychology. So I thought that Christianity is not for me, that uh, it was uh, something good for my parents' generation, but we were done with it in mine. Then in 1984, when I was 17 years old, my mother won a trip to Europe in a church raffle. She didn't want to go, so uh, she sent me because she knew that I was crazy about Paris. But uh, on the way to Paris, we stopped uh, about one hour outside the city to go look at another old church. And I thought, oh my God, we have to go see another old church. But uh, I didn't want to stay on the bus. I followed the old people in just to get it over with. Well, this was the cathedral at Chartres. I walked in there and I was overwhelmed by the glory of God. There was nothing in my experience growing up in late 20th century America in a small town that prepared me for the glory of God made manifest in the stones and the, the glass of this magnificent building. And uh, the majesty, the awe, the sense of wonder I felt standing there in the nave of Chartres just uh, convinced me on the spot, God does exist. And not only does God exist, he wants you, he wants me. I wanted to know who was this God who inspired this cathedral? I never forgot that. And as I graduated from high school and entered the university, I began to wrestle very deeply uh, and intellectually, spiritually, with questions of ultimate meaning. And I finally decided that I was being called to be a Catholic. Well, in my first job as a journalist in Louisiana, I was sent one day to interview an elderly priest, an old Catholic monsignor named Carlos Sanchez. And he welcomed me in, he told me the story of his life and how he himself as a young man born in Guatemala to a, a coffee planter had been sent to Yale in the US to study there at Yale, he lost his faith. His family was Catholic, but he couldn't believe anymore. Well, one day in the 1930s, when Sanchez got a call from the family back in Guatemala, saying that his father was old and dying and was going to have a mass of reconciliation to come back to the Catholic Church before he died. Sanchez got on a plane and went to Guatemala City. At the cathedral, as he kneeled to receive communion on his tongue, he saw a bright flash of light come out of the host and he heard a voice with his ears say, I have always loved you. He was instantly reconverted. When he came back to the US, he began to do a lot of penance for his years of disbelief. And uh, after some years, he began to feel a calling to the priesthood. Then he thought his, his um, conversion or his calling couldn't possibly be true. So he got a call one day saying that his first, uh, his favorite niece back in Guatemala was about to have her first communion. He flew down for that, knelt to receive communion there. The same thing happened, a burst of light. This time the voice said, why don't you do as I ask? So um, he decided I will become a priest. This old man, when he finished telling me this story, he was crying. This 91 year old man was crying as if this had all happened to him last week. It struck me with such force as a young journalist there. I knew that that old man had, wit had witnessed a miracle, two miracles in fact. I knew he was telling me the truth. I knew that God was real and that God was calling me to finally surrender and submit to Christianity in the Catholic Church. And that's what I did. Uh, Nevertheless, I, I met God first as a Catholic and I, I met him through two things, beauty and this saint. Uh, Monsignor Sanchez. 
and I knew that God was calling me. So um, today, when I when I talk about my own faith, you know, I, I tend not to make a, an, an argument, an intellectual argument for the faith, but I tell stories. I tell stories like the one I just told you. Now, when I'm in Paris, I'm going to eat at the greatest restaurant in the world, in my opinion, Chez Regis, Huitrerie uh, Regis. It's a little oyster bar in Saint-Germain, where I was there some years ago with my niece, a 19-year-old American girl, and we sat there eating the oysters, and I was giving a theology of French oysters. And I was using the oysters to explain the principle of sacramentality to this teenage girl. And, you know, the, we experience the glory of God in something as simple as an oyster and, and in the goodness of the men and women who brought this oyster to us. So uh, for me, coming to Paris and going to the oyster bar is, you could say, an act of worship. And I love this city. It's a holy city to me. France is the holy land. Vive la France.